that will not come into Christ. The government of the day and religious organization will begin to promise them peace, peace in sin. But let me tell you something. When you are in sin, there is trouble. But when you are in Christ, there is peace. But they will begin to promise them peace in sin. They will believe because they have never trusted the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They will continue in their abominable act. Even after God has sent several things to warn them to stay out of sin and to come into him. Then one day while they are eating and drinking and enjoying themselves, abusing the creator because they have worshipped created things more than the creator. They have abused the creator over and over again and the creator have had patience over and over again. Then while they are enjoying themselves, then sudden destruction will come and wipe them out in form of earthquakes and calamity. It has just started. Open your eyes and see. God is giving you a sign to come back home, to come into Jesus Christ. The Bible says that there is no peace for the wicked. If you are a wicked man or woman, destruction awaits you. The hiding place is only in Jesus Christ. Marry the word of God. Any preaching that is not biblical, run away for your life. Any church that does not bring preach biblical sound doctrine, run away for your life. I don't care the church you attend to. Any church that exalts human leadership above the leadership of the Holy Spirit is not a church, but it's a Babylonian religion. Run away. Destruction is coming upon the world. I can see destruction coming just like a flood, like Typhoon Yolanda, destroying a lot of places. If if you are not in Christ, if you are not in the ship, you will definitely be destroyed. Don't ever say that you were not told. You were told what you refuse to hear. May the Lord help us all to hearken unto the voice of his call. God bless you all. Good evening, brothers and sisters. God bless you, and you're welcome to another very good uh, Thursday here uh, from the Bride of Christ Broadcasting Network. Uh, thank God for the, all the members of staff in this broadcasting network, and thank you all our viewers all around the world for tuning and viewing again on this great and wonderful location. You know, it's always a great and wonderful time when we gather together to listen to God's word. Because God's word is life and God's word is the only hope. The last hope of humanity is Jesus Christ. Because all other things have failed. The hymn writer will say all other ground is sinking sand. But only Jesus Christ he will not sink. So uh, the hymn writer will say in the book of Psalms. He said behold how good and how pleasant it is. When brothers dwell together in peace and in harmony. Now we can never have peace and harmony except in the uh, agreement to the word of God because the word of God is what guarantees everlasting peace and the word of God is what gives true harmony. So the world cannot enjoy harmony because they have rejected Jesus Christ. How do you they, have they rejected Jesus Christ? By rejecting the word because Jesus Christ is the word. So when we go an inch away from the word of God, then we have rejected the Savior who is the Prince of Peace. So this evening, I would like to welcome you to the End Time Voice program uh, right here from the Philippines and greetings to you all over the world. Now, before we begin, I would like to uh, encourage each and every one of you to, if you are truly a bride of Christ, try to get the old time hymn book where there are very good songs where you can sing. Uh, some of these songs are still on YouTube. You can go on YouTube and download these songs because just this evening, uh, when I was just having a little quiet time, God was reminding me of reminding his children uh, of the need to go back to the old path, going back to the old path of singing good revival songs. Because the truth about it is that most of the songs that are being sung today are not Holy Ghost inspired. They steer our emotions and they don't uh, build the character of Christ in us. So most of the songs uh, we listen to today are more of like uh, trying to feed our emotions and not feeding our spirit. So if you are truly led by God, as the book of Romans, we say, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So if you are a son of God, then you will care more about what fits your spirit than what fits your emotions. So there are two worlds. There are two feelings right now. It's either you are spiritual or you are emotional. It's either you are feeding your spirit or you are feeding your emotions. So these are very good hymns. Uh, they are very good Holy Ghost inspired songs there. You can choose from the one that God is leading you to. You can always sing the hymns because the, the Bible made us understand that we should always sing hymns. We should always praise the Lord and we should always sing psalms. Because that is the great and the powerful way of giving God 
worship i'm so happy to be here this evening because it's home going time very soon the bride of christ will be taken home very soon the trials will be over very soon the persecution will be over very soon we shall uh, smile with the lord uh bride of christ all around the world how will you feel when you see jesus christ face to face and he talks to you and he say welcome my good and my faithful servant welcome my child and he wipes away your tears and he hugs you and he leads you into your abode in heaven so this evening i would like to thank you so much for viewing once more again uh this evening i have a message for you that god have inspired us to bring this evening by the power of the holy ghost we don't speak by our own wisdom we don't speak by the enticing words of men but we speak only through the power of God, through the power of the resurrected King, through the power of the Holy Ghost, through the power of Jesus Christ, who was and is and is to come, who has never died, who rose again, who is alive, who is living in his church, and who has given his church victory. I'm so happy because the church of Jesus Christ can never be defeated because the life of Christ is in the church. So this evening, the title of the message this evening, The Reaper's Harvest, The Gathering of the Wheat. So if you are truly a son and a daughter of God, if you are truly a bride of Christ, then this message is a very, very important and strategic message in your spiritual growth and in locating your way back to heaven. Bride of Christ, we need to understand the times that we're living in. We need to understand what we ought to do. We need to be wise. We need to be smart. We need to really wear the whole armor of God that we might be able to stand against the whole vices of the enemy. Because I promise you that the fight is getting intense because it's just like labor. You know, when a woman is about to push out, the pain is more. So the pain is so much now. A lot of people are giving up. A lot of people are backsliding. Why? Because they don't have the true revelation about what they ought to do in this time. And you know what? The devil is trying to knock a lot of people out of the way. So if you are truly a bride of Christ, you stay tuned, you listen to this message, and you'll be so happy that you can say that you are one of them. So I'd just like to sing, before I continue this message this evening, there are people almost everywhere whose heart are all aflame. They are baptized with the Pentecost and powerful service came. It is born in now within my heart, oh glory to his name. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Hallelujah, you one of them. Oh, I am one of them. Oh, I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Oh, yeah, I'm one of them. Oh, yeah, you are one of them. Oh, I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Oh, I am one of them. Hallelujah, I am one of them. Oh, I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Oh, yeah, I am one of them. Are you one of them? I'm one of them. Oh, I am so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Oh God, Heavenly Father, King of Glory, the King of the universe, the great I am, the mighty man in battle, the one that have never lost a fight, the one that has never been elected, the one that cannot be dethroned, the one that sits on his throne and nothing can move him. The great and mighty God, the ancient of days, the ocean divider, the one that laid the foundations of the earth, the giver of life, the commander of the universe, the president of presidents, the mayor of mayors, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the bridegroom of the bride, the word, the living waters, the unliving bread, the good shepherd. Father, the one that uh, when he speaks, it must come to pass. Lord Jesus, to you alone, we bring our praise, our adoration, our worship. We bow to you, not to any man, not to any systems. We bow to the only wise and only true God. The one that rules over the whole universe. The one that decides the affairs of men. The one that controls the heart of kings. The one that does and undoes. The one that has almighty power. You are the all-sufficient God. You are the almighty God. Without you, nothing will exist. Because in you, through you, and by you, we are all things created. Father, we come before you this evening, Lord. We are broken by the power of your word. We are broken by the power of your presence. That no man can glory on himself. But every man must be broken down in the presence of the Most High God. That every knee shall bow. 
and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, because you have never failed and you will never fail. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for the privilege and opportunity you have given to me to share your word. Lord Jesus Christ, I am nothing. I am nothing. I am just a sinner saved by grace. I cannot do anything without you. It is through you, by you, that I can do what I do today. Father, I don't claim to be who I am not. I am nothing, Lord. Father, this evening I pray from every part of the world that the viewers are listening to this message. Lord God, take over. Everyone watching this program, may the anointing locate you right now. May it break every chain. May it break every barrier. May people be set free. May their eyes be open. May people run away from Laodicea and from Babylon into the marvelous light of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father Lord, no man will be glorified tonight because only you will take the glory. Only you will take the honor and only you will take the adoration. Father, teach us your word, Lord, and teach us how to apply it, Lord, and teach us how to follow, Lord. We are 100% dependent on you, Lord Jesus. Is there anyone who is sick this night at the sound of my voice, through the power of the Holy Ghost, through the power of the Most High God, I declare you healed in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that these signs shall follow them that believe, that in my name they shall cast out devils, they shall heal the sick, they shall tread on serpents and scorpions and nothing shall harm them and I come in that apostolic authority this night and I declare the captives free those that are in darkness I declare them free by the power in the name of Jesus Christ there is no other name in which we must be saved other than the name of Jesus Christ as we look into your word this evening Lord be glorified be magnified be exalted be exalted Lord I say thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus be thou exalted be thou magnified both now and forevermore thank you father for this is the confidence that we have that whenever we call upon your name that you answer us be exalted be lifted up be magnified both now and forevermore for in Jesus most gracious name of prayed and the church will say amen now uh this evening, I'm just so happy to be here. We're going to be reading from the book of Matthew. You know, we've been taking a Bible study from the book of Matthew 13. We're going to start reading from verse 24 to verse 30. Then we're going to a bit uh, jump to from verse 36 to verse 43. Then we're going to go back to Galatians 7, 6, 7 to 8. Then we're going to go back to Amos chapter 3, verse 3. So now, beginning my reading from the book of Matthew, Gospel according to uh, Matthew, uh, chapter 13 and verse 14 to 30. The Bible says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seeds in his field. But when men slept, his enemy came and sowed tasks among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was brought and brought forth fruits, then appeared the task also. So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seeds in thy field? From whence then had thus? 28. He said unto them, An enemy had done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said unto them, Nay, least while you gather up the thus, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest and in the time of the harvest i will say to the reapers gather ye together first the tasks and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn now we're going to go a bit further that same matthew 13 from verse 36 then jesus sent the multitudes away and went into the house and his disciples came unto him saying Declare unto us the parable of the task of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the children of the kingdom. But the tasks are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are the angels. And therefore the tasks are gathered and born into fire. So it shall be at the end of this world. 
Son of man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into the forty furnace of fire. There where there shall be weeping and garnishing of teeth, then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who had an ear, let him hear. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, that he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap corruption. But he that soweth in the spirit shall of the spirit live, reap life everlasting. The last book I'm going to read is in Amos chapter 3, verse 3. The Bible says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Again, Amos chapter 3, verse 3. The Bible is saying, can two walk together except they be agreed? May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. So this evening, we are going to be looking at the uh, reaper's harvest, the gathering of the wheat. Now, for the past two to three messages, I've been talking about this subject because it is very, very important to our understanding of the times that we're living in. Now, the Bible talks about the harvest time. And the harvest is a process. It's a period of time. It's a process in a period of time of the gathering in or the bringing in of either the tasks or the weeds. So, for example, right now, a farmer owns a land. He goes to the land. He plants uh, seeds of uh, 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 mangoes. He plants mango seeds. Now, it will take time. For those seeds to germinate. Now when they germinate. They need to be watered. Until they get mature. Now when they get mature. Those uh, trees. Begin to produce. Uh, fruits. Called mango fruits. Because in their DNA. There is mango. It is mango DNA. So it must produce of its kind. Remember in the book of Genesis. There is a law. That every a living thing should produce of its kind. That means as a man, you produce of your own kind. God will produce of his own kind. The devil will also produce of his own kind. So the farmer will go to the farm and plant seeds of mango. Now that mango seed will produce of its own kind. I've never seen a mango tree producing oranges. So it must produce of its own kind. Because the fruits on that tree is a representation of the DNA in the seed that the tree germinated from. So that is why St. Paul was telling us in Galatians 6, 7, he said, what a man sow, that is what is going to reap. So right now, when you come back to spiritually, you tend to see that when you reap the word of God, when you sow the word of God, you will reap eternal life. But when you sow anti-word, you add anything or you subtract anything from the word of God, you will reap damnation in hellfire. Now, going back to my explanation, when that mango becomes mature and it begins to produce fruits, now what happens is that the fruits get ripe. Now, when the fruits get ripe, there are people that are contracted by the owner of the farm to come and help to harvest the mango. Now, listen to this. Remember that the farmer planted mango. So, any other thing aside from mango is a waste. So, the only thing he's going to harvest into his storehouse is what he planted because all other things are unwanted what he wants is what he planted in, on my farmland if i want maize i will plant maize if i want mango i will plant mango so right now the bible is telling us that god has a farm the world was created by god the bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and the word was the word, word was made flesh and dwell among us. And the Bible says in the book of Genesis 1 1 that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So the heavens and the earth were created by God. So this earth belongs to God. That is why any man that says that there is no God, the Bible says that he's a fool. Because you begin to ask yourself a question: where did the world come from? Who created the world? 
since everything is a product of the creator then you ask yourself a question where did i come from i came from my father who created my father who created my ancestors that means that at a point in time there is someone that is a supernatural being that created all things we thank god for the bible because the bible gives us a revelation of the truth about the creation of the world so the whole earth belongs to god you see number right now now god owning the world not by purchase but by creation you can only own a land when you purchase it but god owns the whole earth because he is the creator of all things now he comes into the earth he plants what did he plant he will plant wheat because that is what he wants and wheat is a type of the sons and daughters of god a type of the elect a type of the children of god because God, in his original mind and his original plan, he created the world for his sons and his daughters. Now we know, in the original plan of God, because the spoken word is the product of the thought of God, and we are the manifestation of the imaginations and the thought of God. Because anything you want to speak out, you think about it first. So right now in my life, what I say, it's a result of the seed that is in my heart. That is why Jesus said, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If your heart is good, your mouth will speak good things. But if your heart is bad, your mouth will speak bad things. So now God will come into the world. Now from him, he will plant. By what? By the spoken word. He created Adam. Planted him on the land. Now the Bible says that what? But at night, the evil one will come. He will sneak in. And come and plant his own seed also. Remember, from before the beginning, there was a clash in heaven. When you go to Revelation 12, you understand this story very well. Lucifer wanted to be worshipped the way God is worshipped. So now, anything that God does, Lucifer wants to do. Because God created us to worship him. Now listen to this right now. Even the book of Ecclesiastes says that here the conclusion of the matter. That our main duty is to fear God and keep his commandment. Because that is the greatest form of worship. So God created the task. He planted the task so that they can worship him. Because God, the definition of God is something that is worshipped. Now for God to be God, there has to be creators that, creators that will worship him. So he has to create sons and daughters that will worship him and give him the glory. Now the devil also wants people to worship him. So the devil also come. And plant his own children that will give him worship and give him glory. Because the devil never creates anything. He waits for God to create. Then he makes a counterfeit of what God creates. That is why today we talk about the Antichrist. Now the Bible says that when that man came to plant those seeds, that he gave some people charge of the field to take care of it. But the people slept at a particular time. And I explained to you last time that by Revelation, we know that in the Ephesian church age, that the preachers that were saddled with the responsibility to take care of the church, to make sure that the church continued in the apostolic doctrine at a particular point in time, the Neocolitan doctrine entered into the church. And they begin to pull down the bar of preaching the message, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there and then it graduated. Up to the Titan Church Age, where the Nicene Council was 100% inaugurated, and the tars were planted into the seeds, the wheat. So now the church became a mixed multitude. Why? Because the goats and the sheep are in the same church. You see the problem right now? Because at the first place, the bar of the church was pulled down. How? By the pulpit. The pulpit was was the, the standard on the uh, on the preaching of the word of god was lowered when you want to enter a church you enter through the pulpit when the pulpit is on fire it will be very hard for the devil to enter into that church that is what the bible says that strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter so always the target of the evil one the target of the enemy is to make sure that the shepherd is either asleep so that he can creep into the farmland of God and plant his own seeds. So any error you see in the church of Jesus Christ today, it was as a result 
of called servants of God that at a particular time they hearken unto the voice of the Neocolitan doctrine and they began to compromise and they began to lower the standard. So they spiritually slept. They were no longer on fire. And that is why the devil will have an open loophole to enter in and plant his seeds. Just like in the beginning when Adam was not around. So the devil will sneak in and do what he did to Eve. If Adam was around, the devil wouldn't have come in. So in the absence of Adam, the devil will come in and plant his own seeds. So now you will see that even from the beginning, there are two seeds. So you see Cain and Abel. Is that correct right now? You see Esau and Jacob. Now when you go further again, you will see Isaac and Ishmael. They always work in two. When you come to the time of Jesus, you see Jesus Christ and Judas. Now you see Jesus saying something. He always tells to the scribes and the Pharisees that you are of your father the devil. That means the devil has children. And God also has children. And he told them something. You will not believe me. Because you are not from me. For if you came from God, you would have known me. Now they will tell him that they are sons of Abraham. He tells them that no, you are not sons of Abraham. For before Abraham I was. For if you are sons of Abraham, then you would have known me. Meaning that they had no connection with Jesus. So if Jesus is the chosen one that came to save the world, he is the living word. That means there are some people existing in this world that were not planted by God. That is why today we have sinners. Because if you claim to be a son or daughter of God, you express the attributes of God. But if you are not expressing the attributes of God, then definitely you are either lost or at the first place you are a tar. So now you see right now. Now he will tell them that should we go, the servants will come back. Because the plants will begin to grow. Now some of the plants on the farmland, they will begin to show characteristics that are not of a wheat. Ha! They begin to observe. But this plant doesn't look like a wheat oh. This one looked like a tar. Who did this? The Lord said to them that an enemy sneaked in when men were sleeping and he did this. He planted tars. But thank God for the spiritual genetic DNA. For by their fruits we shall know them. If God planted you, you will grow to be like Christ. But if it's the devil that planted you, you will grow to be like your father the devil. So there must be a differentiation. There has to be a separation. It is not like the world that we are living in today. That so-called Christians look like the world. You cannot even differentiate between a Christian and someone who is not a Christian. Why? Because those who claim to be Christians are not Christians. They are just religious. Because we understand from this parable in Matthew 13. That they were able to differentiate. They were able to know. That means, even from the physical characteristics, you will know if someone is a genuine Christian or not. I am not talking about going to church. For the church is a mixed multitude. I am talking about the life that you live. I am talking about your testimony. I am talking about what you do. When people are not watching you, is your life reflecting Christ? Or is your life reflecting the devil? In this world today, there are two categories of people. Either you are a wheat or you are a tar. The wheats are sons and daughters of God. The tars are sons and daughters of the wicked one. Both of them are religious. And let me tell you something. The tars are even more religious than the wheat. You see them right now. Now, a time will come. They will go to him. Should we pull these things? I'll say, no, don't pull them out. Leave them to grow together. That is why you can't place your hope on a church goer. You cannot just come to a church and meet a church member and begin to trust the person. No. The Bible said that they that trust the name of the Lord. In this Christian race, you cannot trust a man. The only person you can trust is God. Because you don't know the person seated close to you, whether he is a wheat or he is a tar. Only God will expose the heart of men. So the church is a mixed multitude. So what is my advice to you? You can only put your trust in God. You can only obey trust, says the Lord. So your life is between you and Jesus. Because salvation is personal. It's me and Jesus. 
It is not me and my family and Jesus. Yes, we help one another. But when it comes to the issue of salvation, it is a personal decision. Take your decision today. Where do you belong? Who is your father? What do you do? What are your characteristics? What are the attributes that you express? A day of God or a day of the evil one? So I say, leave them on the field. So you can now see that the earth has become a mixed multitude. That the church of Jesus Christ has become a mixed multitude. In the church today, we have rapists. We have liars. We have people that make merchandise of the souls of men. Oh, look at the condition of the church. Until people begin to lose hope in the denominations today that there is no true church. But I want to let you know something. That when you see a fake product, it means that there is an original product. You cannot fake what is original. The devil knows that there is the original word of God. That is why he's going around to fake the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I tell you, keep on searching. Keep on searching. There is a true church. There are true men of God. The Holy Ghost is still here. The church is marching on. The church is getting prepared. Because evil can never win light. Darkness can never win light. Light will always prevail. The church of Jesus Christ will always prevail. We might be a minority. But greater is he that is in the church. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in the bride. For by one spirit are we baptized into one body. You might be from Nigeria. You might be from America. You might be from Madagascar. It doesn't matter. What matters is if you are a child of God, then we will agree. Because our meeting point is the word of God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So you see right now, he will say, leave them. Leave them. So you see, when you see the sorry state of the church today, there is a true church. Now believe me, in the Philippines here, there is a true church. All around the world, there is a true church. All around the world, the spirit is moving. All around the world, as the prophet said it will be. All around the world, there is a mighty revelation of the coming of the Lord. As the waters covers the sea. And you know what, as I'm preaching in my heart today. Deep down in my heart, the spirit is moving. Deep down in my heart, the word of God is moving. Deep down in my heart, there is a fire that is moving. So I tell you today, do not lose hope in what you see around the world. Look up to Jesus. Don't look up to any denomination. Denominations have failed. Religion has failed. Government has failed. Politics have failed. So what should I do? I will behave like David. In the book of Psalms, David said, I look up to the hills from where my help cometh. He said, my help cometh in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Bible says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The name the name of the Lord is a mighty tower. The name of the Lord is exalted. There is no one like Jesus. So the bride of Christ is looking up to Jesus Christ because he is our final hope in a rotten and a perverse generation. That is why we say Maranatha. Even so, come Lord Jesus. So you see right now, you see right now, so the church is a mixed multitude. So he will tell them, so how do we harvest? How do you differentiate? You tell them, my men, just leave it. There will be a time that will come. It is called the harvest time, where everything will mature. Let the good continue to be good. Let the bad continue to be bad until that harvest time. And the Bible made us understand that the harvest time is the end of the world. Those that are to do the harvest are what we call the reapers. The reapers are those that gather in either the tasks or the, the wheat. Now, and the Bible made us understand here. Last week we saw how the task will be gathered. Now we know. The Bible says in the book of uh, uh, Matthew chapter 13, from verse uh, 30, he said, let both grow until the harvest time. We're in the harvest time because this is now the end of the world. How do we know that we're in the harvest time? When you look at the book of Revelation, we are now in the seven church age, which is the Laudation church age. And the seven church age is the final church age. And the church messenger has already come and he has already gone. He has already delivered his message. And we know that every messenger dies with his generation. So as the messenger has died, it's trying to signal us that we are not just in the end of time, but we are in the end of the end of all things. So now is the end times. 
Now, number two is that you can see from the book of Matthew 24, the Bible talk about earthquake, diseases, pestilence, hunger. Now, these are what is happening in the world. The every day, every week, you hear about earthquakes, you hear about diseases, the coronavirus. Uh, you hear about the problem of the world. There are a lot of problem, economic meltdown. You hear about killings. You hear about nations rising against nations. You hear about the Third World War. You hear about America fighting China. All these things are signs of the end. Now, let's go back to the church. You see the apostates that are taking place in the church. Very hard to find a true church in this end time. What is the reason? Now, in December, they'll be celebrating December 25. But I challenge you, the whole world, show me anywhere in the Bible that states that Jesus was born on the 25. It's not in the Bible, but the whole world is celebrating it. They say they are Christians. They don't know that they are celebrating the birthday of a devil. A decorrected monkey cannot be a human being. So a decorrected Thomas can never be Jesus. That is not Jesus. Jesus was not born on the 25th. And religion makes you to celebrate a day once. So on 25, people will be holy, thinking that they are worshipping Jesus. What about on the 26? Are you not going to worship God? You see? So the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ is every day in the life of a believer. It's not a selected day. No! Our Sabbath is not on a selected day. Our Sabbath is a rest that we come to have in Jesus Christ. So living a Christian life, living holy, living righteous is an everyday duty. You know why? I don't struggle to live the life of Christ because I am an expression of the attributes of God. Because I am a seed of God, so my germination is expressing the characteristics of God. I don't struggle to look like my father. I don't struggle to talk like my father. I don't struggle to walk like my father. Because of what? I am a product of the seed of my father. It was my father that planted me. So I must behave like him. I must walk like him. I will talk like him. So if you are a wheat, you behave like he who planted you. The Bible said that it was Jesus Christ that planted the wheat. So you see right now. But if you are not a child of God, then you also express the attributes of your father. Now you see something right now. Now the Bible talks about the, the reapers. They are the end time ministers. I'm not talking about ministers that are from school of theology. No, I am talking about Bible called men and daughters of God. I am talking about people who are filled with the Holy Ghost. I am talking about people that have met God at the back of the desert. I am not talking about these modern day scholars. These modern day certificate holders that have taken over the pulpit, speaking big grammars without power. There is no power again in the church because theology have taken over the place of the Holy Ghost. What a time that we are living in. Today, churches no longer look for pastors that are filled with the Holy Ghost, but they look for people that have theological certificates. Now, let me tell you something. You might have the highest degree in theology, but without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you are not a son of God because it is only the baptism of the Holy Ghost that certifies you as a son and a daughter of God. So you know what? Sometimes you go to some denominations. They'll be asking you, what Bible school did you graduate from? Now my question is, what Bible school did Moses graduate from? What Bible school did Elijah graduate from? What Bible school did the apostles graduate from? Now let me tell you something. By a biblical standpoint of view, you don't need to attend any theology. What you need is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need an encounter with God. Your encounter with God is more important than any uh, four-corner classroom you can enter. You know what? You can study theology for 30 years. But without an encounter with God, you still remain an unused vessel in the hands of God. God cannot use a man that he, he did not call. Now listen to this right now. I have a company. I want people to work for me. I am the one to select who to work for me. You don't come and work for me. If you work for me, there's no reward for you. The problem with this generation is that there are a lot of people that have been qualified by theology, but they are unqualified before God. A lot of people have been called by the church, have been called by men, but they were not called by God. That is why when they preach, they preach what men want to hear because they must do the bidding of men. You see them right now. If men call you, you will please men. If the school of theology calls you, you will preach what the theology says you will preach. You become a slave to he who called you. But if Jesus called you the way he called Moses, then you will stand before Pharaoh and you will declare, Thus says the 
the Lord because you have met God at the back of the desert and he has transformed and changed your life and nothing can move you. So today, in this generation, we don't need theologians. No, we don't need lecturers at the back of the pulpit. We need sons and daughters of God that are filled with the Holy Ghost. We need men on fire. We need men that have the Pentecost. I need a preacher that has the mechanics and the dynamics. I need a preacher that has the pillar of fire. I need a preacher that God has called to prepare his elect back home. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Where is it right now? Now the denominations. How will they gather? We talked about it last week. The task. Now listen to what the Bible says. Matthew 13, 30. Let both grow together until harvest. And in the time, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the task and bind them into bundles. To bond them. Now you can see that it is not just one bundle. There are a lot of bundles. So you begin to wonder, why a lot of churches today? Why a lot of denominations? Why a lot of doctrines? We have thousands and one churches. But the world is more corrupt than what it used to be. Because none of this denomination is standing with the world. Everyone is standing with his doctrine and dogmas. Because that is what they believe is correct. Well, listen to what the Bible says. A way might seem right unto a man, but the end of it is destruction. So it is a gathering of men that teach similar things, that agree on one teaching. So they come together and they form a denomination. So what gathers them together are their so-called men doctrine. You get the point right now? They are not, they are not, they are not, they are not, they are not godly doctrine because these are people that feast on the living bread. What is the living bread? The contaminated gospel. They have added their own human corrupted understanding to the word of God. And it has contaminated the gospel of Jesus Christ. For example, how do you contaminate the gospel of Jesus Christ? Now, when we talk about the book of Acts, when you go back somewhere to Acts 19, you begin to see that the original baptism was baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How did the baptism of the Lord, Father, Son, Holy Ghost enter? The Bible said that, and you shall go into the world and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, the name is singular, meaning there is one name. So the name, what is the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost? Now, by revelation, Peter knew that the name was Jesus Christ. That is why in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, he said, repent and be baptized. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. That means if you are not baptized with the correct apostolic biblical formula of baptism, then you are not a son of God. You have manipulated or turned the word of God upside down. Now you see it right now. So these guys will be gathered around their denomination. Now, let me give you an example right now. Do you notice that in this generation, most of the evangelists that go out to preach, they don't preach the word of God. They recruit men to their denominations, to their churches. Until today, you have the pastor. He's the chairman of the board of trustee. His wife is the treasurer. His children, all the members of his family are part of the board of trustee. And you know what? When a pastor dies, then his son will take over. Because the gospel has so much been abused that it has become a family dynasty. So it is not who is with the Holy Ghost now. It is about uh, the pastor's son. So today, in the church right now, if I die today, then my son will take over, whether he is filled with the Holy Ghost or not. No, that is not what it's supposed to be. It's so, we're supposed to be chosen by God. Men do not choose you. I don't have the right to choose any man. It is God that chooses men. He equips them and he sends them. The one that calls you is the one that will equip you. Now you see right now. Let pass now. So now begin to see. So these guys will be bundled. So you have a lot of denominations. And you know what? There's one spirit that would bind them together. That is the Antichrist spirit. You know why? Because no matter how what denomination teaches, it might seem to be correct. But when you look at it through the eye of the scripture, it's not correct. For example, right now, I'll give you an example. Right now is the whole world not celebrating what we call Christmas. Is it in the Bible? Why are all churches, so-called denomination and religion, they claim that they know Jesus. They claim that they have gone out of Catholicism. The church that was formed in Nisian Council, 
but they celebrate the same idolatrous celebration that she is celebrating. Then you know what? It is the same spirit. You came out of Catholicism. So you are behaving like Catholics because you are a product of Catholicism. So you celebrate. Uh, your celebrations are all around Catholicism. Now look at now. Go to the Old Testament. There are a lot of feasts that God gave to us. The church is not celebrating those feasts. Come to the New Testament. There is no place in the Bible that told us to celebrate Christmas. Or that told us to celebrate Easter. The only place that Easter was celebrated in the book of Acts. And that time, Peter was in prison. And we saw that those that were celebrating the Easter were idolatrous worshippers. Why did the church not celebrate Easter? So if the church in the book of Acts never celebrated Easter, why is the church today celebrating Easter? Because the church today is a tar. They are not wits. For if they are wits, they will hear the voice of their father and they will do only thus says the Lord. You see what I'm talking about right now? Now see, what about the theology schools that you have opened? The theology schools that qualifies men to be bishops and archbishops and general overseers and superintendents and venerables. All these titles that are not even in the Bible. In fact, the latest title I'm waiting for right now is Jesus Christ. Somebody should call himself Jesus Christ. And I'm not uh, uh, surprised for the Pope call himself the vicar of Christ. Meaning that he is the sole representative of Christ here on earth. But let me tell you something. The Pope, most especially Pope Benedict XVI, is an antichrist. He is not a son of God. Because he, all his teachings are anti-Bible. Go back to your Bible and read it. I know what? Most of these denominations that know that they don't preach the truth, what do they do? They discourage their members from reading the Bible. And they discourage their members from praying. Because any man who prays in the name of Jesus, any man who studies the Bible, one day he will have an encounter with God. And when you have an encounter with God, God will show you the light. And that will be the beginning of your transformation. Now you see right now, so these guys will be gathered around denomination. They will be gathered around religion. So when you look at the world right now, you see thousands of denominations. You see thousands of religions. All daughters of the whore. Because that system that gave back to the Tar is what we call Babylonianism. It's Babylon. The name of Babylon now has changed. The name of Babylon is Laodicea. So all churches are operating with the spirit of Laodicea. They are lukewarm. They claim to be hot. But they are cold. Why do we say so? Now look at the church right now. They claim to call the name of Jesus. But there's no holiness. There's no righteousness in the church right now. Women wearing trousers. Women painting their faces. Until you cannot differentiate between a prostitute and a church goer. That is the spirit of Laodicea in the church. It is the prevailing waters. It is eating the clergymen. The clergymen are sleeping with their choir members. There is sex in the church. Fornication in the church. There is big pimping in the church. The highest level of fraud is in the church. The highest level of lies is in the church. Fake gospel, fake preachers, a lot of dirty things happening in the denomination today. Why? Because those denominations are not of God. They are gathering of the task because their aim is for them to be destroyed because they are of their father, the devil. You see number right now. Now let me tell you something. Anything that comes from the devil will be destroyed. It will be destroyed. Yes, those ministers have been given anointing to gather the task. So they will never preach the word. You know that? Because those that are following after them, they are not following because they love God. They are following it out of a selfish mind because they want the blessings that come from the gospel, but they don't want the gospel. For example, like I will give an example. During the time of the ministry of Jesus, he fed 5,000. So the 5,000 were coming to him. So one day Jesus was telling them, you did not come because you love me. But you came because of the food I'm giving to you. So you are coming because of the benefit you get from the gospel. Now, those denominationalists, those religion, those churches that you see, they are part of the bundle. Bundles. Now, the Bible talks about bundles. We have the bundles of the 80s. Those that believe that there is no God. We have the bundles of the Antichrist. Just that among the bundles of the Antichrist, listen to this right now. There are so many groups among the bundles of the Antichrist. Huh? There are so many groups. How do we know that they are Antichrist? Now, Christ is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was made flesh. And the Word dwelt among us. And the name of the Word is Jesus Christ. 
I'm making a point right now. So the word of God is Jesus Christ. That means the Bible is God. Because the Bible says that in the book of Revelation, that the name of God is the word of God. So anybody that perverts the word of God, that changes the word of God, that adds or subtracts from the word of God has become an antichrist. So a lot of denominations right now. Now, you don't even know which is the right denomination. There are thousands of denominations. You, you, you walk one kilometer, there's a church. Two kilometers, there's a church. Everywhere, everybody calling himself a pastor. So you don't even know who are the true called sons and daughters of God because most of those denominations are not of God. Denomination has never been of God. God has never been denominated. God always nominates by predestination, but the devil denominates unto condemnation. So all the denominations that have their creed, they have their dogmas, they have their doctrines, their doctrines of men, mixing the word of God with the things of men. All of them, they are bundles. Now, the second category of people are those, we call them the magogs. They don't even believe in God in the first place. They don't believe that there is God. And they are atheists. And you know what? Their number is fast multiplying today. Fast multiplying, fast multiplying. And this category of people, they are among the educated ones, among the learned ones. Most of them, they went to school. Most of them, they are rich. Most of them, they are these Illuminati members. They are free Muslim members. Go to America, you see a lot of them. Go to Nigeria, go to South Africa, come to Philippines. Every part of the world, they are there. They believe that there is no God. And the Bible said that it is only a fool that says in his heart that there is no God. So no matter how educated you are no matter the number of certificates you are if in your heart you believe that there is no god then the bible declares you a fool and i've come to remind you that you are a fool until you change your ways and go back to christ so you being wise is not dependent on the number of certificates you have no you being wise is you knowing god those who know god are wise but those who don't follow the way of god are foolish now these guys, they practice what we call communism. Now, maybe in the next preaching, we'll be talking more about socialism, talking about communism, Russia, China, and these other parts of the world that practice what we call what? Communism right now. So you see right now, there are different bundles. Different bundles. Is that correct? Bundles of fornicators, bundles of liars, bundles of fake preachers, bundles of antichrist, bundles of magog. Different. Begin to name the different sins that we have. Because the devil is a multiplier. Now, you know what the devil will do? devil will give you something and take away what money cannot buy from you. Look at it right now. Now, in some places, I know of a lady who is a virgin. That lady is a virgin. Then a, a guy came to her. Now, that guy is a type of the devil. The guy is very rich. So he gave her money. He, everything she wants, he buys for her. He buys iPhone 19, iPhone 10, iPhone 15. Everything she wants, he gives to her. Why? Because the guy's aim is after the virginity of the woman. Because that virginity is priceless. You cannot buy it in the market. So he can give any amount of money to make sure that he's peeled that blood from that woman. And immediately he disverges that girl. He condemns her and she's no longer a virgin again. Then what? He runs away. That is what the devil has done to the denomination. He has disverging them. Because the pure word of God makes you a virgin. So now, when the devil gives you money, he gives you prosperity, he gives you what you Listen to this. The devil knows what you want. And the devil is ready to go to any length to give you what you want in order for him to spiritually disvirgin you so that you become a whore and a prostitute and become, lose your dignity as a bride of Christ. That's what the devil has done to a lot of denomination. So you see a lot of Christians right now, they go for money. They go to churches. that. You know, they are rich. You see, I'm, I don't have anything against riches. Riches cannot take you to heaven. And poverty cannot take you to heaven. But well, let me tell you something. The Bible says, what shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? The Bible also said that it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if we are followers of Christ, what I would like to ask is that, was Jesus Christ the richest preacher in his time? Why are we having the richest preachers today? The, the, the duty of the preacher is not to enter into the Forbes magazine. The duty of the preacher is to enter into the Forbes magazine of God, of the number of revival that he has submitted himself under the anointing of God for him to perform. A preacher will not be equated to number of cars or money or universities you build. No. The, 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 the strength of a preacher in the sight of God is in your obedience to the word of God. How many souls have you preached to? 
How many people have you taken care of? How many people have you led to Christ? How many people have you helped to live a holy and a righteous life? How many people made rapture through your ministry? Let me tell you something. That is the truth about it. But you know what? A lot of preachers have traded their virginity, their spiritual virginity for money. So that is what happens right now. So you see right now? So the devil knows. Those in Illuminati, they enter there for connection. So you sell your soul to the devil and get connected. That is another bundle there. You see number right now? Now, they are tied. Any organization you see have spirits. Roman Catholicism have spirits. All these denominations, they have their spirits. All these occultic groups, they have their spirit. Even the wall has a spirit. So it's all bundling them. Bundling them. Bundling them. Bundling them. But later, they will be organized under one system, which we call the Antichrist system, which is the Roman Catholic system. Is that correct right now? Now you see the Pope is calling for one religion. He said, whether you are Muslim, whether you are Christian, whether you are Hindu, whether you don't believe in God, he said, we are all sons and daughters of God and we are all going to heaven. Lie! That is not what the Bible says. This is Antichrist. So we, we saw this thing last week, the Economical Council, the Nisian Council, coming to metamorphose into the econo Economical Council, coming to metamorphose into the World Council of Churches, all of them, the gathering together of the task, because their revival is around anti word anti word anti word that is why listen to this right now they have the miracles they have the signs they have the wonders yes they have it i'm not saying about it. but listen to what the bible says the bible says that what they will come at the last day they will say that we did miracles we did signs we did wonders we performed this we did that but jesus christ said tell them depart from me you workers of iniquity what is iniquity yes they did the signs and wonders because that is what they wanted they never loved jesus they loved the miracle that came from jesus do you know that Jesus can heal you today physically in your body or you go to hell? Because salvation is not only in the body. Salvation is from the heart. So the greatest salvation that happens to a man is for the man to be delivered from the spirit tormenting his generation. You see, if you are delivered from the spirit that tormented your generation, then you have truly been saved. Let me tell you something. i rather remain sick in the hospital and be holy than for me to be well and fall into a lot of trouble. A lot of people will go to hell with good health. A lot of some people will go to heaven and they are sick here on earth. St. Paul said he prayed. And God told him that his grace is sufficient for him. Can you see right now? So the gospel is like that. Now, today, we are going to be looking at something now. Now we are going to be looking at who are the, who are the wheat? Who are the wheat? Now, number one is that you need to understand that the wheat are the predestinated sons and daughters of God. Why are they predestinated? Now see number right now. Before they were planted, God knew them. Because he had the seed in him. Yes, he knows those that are his. So before the world began, God knows his children. God intentionally planted them and God chose them to represent him here on earth. Now let's look at that in the book of Romans chapter 8. We see something in Romans 8 right now. Romans 8, 28. You see something there right now. Now, Romans 8, 28. The Bible says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them who are called according to his purpose. So the predestinated ones are those that are called according to the purpose of God. What is the purpose of God? Listen to this. The purpose of God is that we might express his image and his likeness here on earth. Because that is the main reason why God created us. Now, how do you express the image and the likeness of God? The image of God is the resemblance of God. The glory of God. The seal of God. So when you have the Holy Ghost in your life, then you are in the image of God. Then the likeness of God is the character of God. Holiness, righteousness, love, peace. And those are what we call the fruit of of the spirit so those ones that love the lord listen they don't love god because of anything no they love god unconditionally because you cannot hate yourself i love my father not because he gives me food not because he paid my tuition fee no i love my father because he is my father it is in my blood i cannot hate my father i just find myself loving my father because i came from him so God is, if you are a child of God, you will love God. How do you love God? You will love the world, not your denominational creed or dogmas or doctrine. So right now, if your church doctrine is going against the word of God, I will stand with the word. So those that are predestinated by God, they always stand with the word of God. 
Thus says the Lord. That is what the disciples did in the book of Acts. And they were persecuted by everybody. That is what Moses did. He stood with us, says the Lord. That is what Micaiah did. He stood with us, says the Lord. So those that are predestinated are those that are standing with God, no matter the trials, no matter the persecution, they are standing on the promises of God because the bride is the word made flesh today. We came from the world. We are the world and we are going back to the world. So we cannot betray who we are. So they are predestinated. They are predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he may be the firstborn among the brethren. Moreover, whom he predestinate, he called. So you cannot be called until you are predestinated. Huh? So you are called because you are predestinated at the first place. You are among the revival, the bridal revival, because it was God that planted you. Without God planting you, Talaga, you, let me tell you something. There is nothing, nothing you can do. You did not choose God. It was God that chose you by predestination. And when he predestinated you, he called you. How did he call you? By his voice. So the voice of God is a coded voice. Not everybody will hearken to the voice of God. Only those that are predestinated and are called will identify the voice of God in their day. And they will follow. Why? Because to them, he chose, he predestinated. Because he foreknew them. And he foreknew them. That is why he calls them. Because a father will always call his children back home. I'll give you an example right now. When I was small, we we'll go to play. Maybe in our barangay or on our streets. So sometimes my father would be at home. When it begins to get to evening time, you know, night time is coming. My father will go out. We begin to call our names. Henry! America, come back home. Come back home. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's already evening time. It's already night time. We went out of the presence of God into the world. And we are stuck in Babylon. So there has to be a voice. There's got to be a message that will call the bride back home. Because it's dinner time. And that dinner time is the Lord's Supper time. And that Lord's Supper time is the meal that we are going to eat in the wedding supper of the Lamb. I see right now. So they are called. Predestinated. Called, justified, sanctified, glorified. And since they are, they are called, because they are predestinated, they are predestinated, they are justified by the blood of Jesus. They are sanctified by the blood of Jesus. They are glorified by the blood of Jesus. They are baptized by the Holy Ghost. Coming back home. That is why we say it's home going time. Just like children, we went out to play, but we hear the voice of our father. He's calling us back home. A lot of people are talking outside. Maybe I'm playing in the marketplace. And there are a lot of voices. But immediately I hear the voice of my father. I know this is my father. Because I, my father's voice is in me. It's in my DNA. I can decode the voice of my father. So no matter the noise in the world, no matter the confusion in the world, when the bride hears the voice of the master, she will know because God is her father. Now, the, 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 the wheat are those we call the wise virgins. In Matthew 25, the wise virgins are those that had oil in their lamps. What is this oil? Oil is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that by one spirit are we baptized into one body so what makes you a church is not your doctrine what makes you a church is not the building what makes you a church is not the fundraising ceremony you see what makes you a church is not your theology what makes you a church is the spirit of god that have sealed the church remember israel was a church do you notice that immediately israel left egypt there was a pillar of fire that was following them do you notice that? There was a pillar of fire. Because that was the seal of identification of God to show that these people are my people. So it is not an organizational belief system that certifies it to be of God. No. It is the Holy Ghost that certifies a church as the church of Jesus Christ. So they are called because they have the lamp. The lamp is the word of God. Because David said, you know what? Lamp. The word of God is a lamp unto my feet. So you see, those virgins in Matthew 25, they had lamps. Is that correct right now? Now, five were wise, the Bible says. Five were foolish. Now, the wise ones had oil in their lamps. And they had oil in their lamps, meaning that the lamp was on. There was light. 
And that is the revelation of the word. So the five wise virgins, they had the revelation of the word because the revelation of the word of God is contained in the voice of God for that age. Now you see, they had the illumination. They had a deeper understanding of the word of God. They were like the sons of Isiaka. The Bible said that the sons of Isiaka understood the time and know what they ought to do because they had a revelation of the time. So they were not working as fools. But the foolish virgins, they had the lamp, but they never had oil. So time came that their fire went off. Why? Because they didn't have oil in their lamps. No baptism of the Holy Ghost. So today, as a church, if there's anything we need to pray for, after we have gotten the mechanics, it is the dynamics. You know, the seed. There is life in the seed. But there needs to be the baptism of the Holy Ghost to amplify the life in the seed, to make the seed germinate so that we can grow and mature into Godhood. Hallelujah. I just pray that you're understanding this message this evening. I'm just so happy to discuss the word of God. Now, the Bible said that the weak are the chosen ones. The Bible said many are called, but few are chosen. You see Roman right now. Many are called. They're in the world. A lot of people call themselves Christians, but few are chosen among them. And those few that are chosen are those few that are qualified to attend the wedding supper of the Lamb. Because they have the dress. Because the dress is the seal. And the seal is the Holy Ghost. I'm making a point right now. Now, also, the wheat are what we call the bride of Christ. Do you know why? Because as Adam was a bridegroom and Eve was his wife, so is Jesus Christ, the bridegroom, and the church is his bride. So the Bible says that the husband and wife will come together and the two shall be one. So the church and Christ are one because the true church carries the spirit of God. What makes you one is your agreement. What makes you agree is because you operate with the same spirit. Can two walk together except they be agreed? So Adam and Eve walk together because they agreed. Denominations are working together because they agree. Why do they agree? Because the spirit that they carry is the same. Light and darkness cannot work together. Christ and Belial cannot work together. So when you see the Roman Catholic Church, most of the members, they go there because they carry an anointing in that commission. There's an anointing in that church that they are carrying and they are operating with. You see them right now. So if you are a bride of Christ, you operate with the anointing of God. Can, 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 can you see right now? So she is... She is, she, is, she, is, she, is, she is she will attend the wedding supper of the Lamb because she has the Spirit of God in her because she and Christ are one. So she is the bride of Christ. So the bride of Christ is not a denomination. No, the bride of Christ are true called son, sons and daughters of God. You see them right now. Now, Pastor, how will I identify myself to be a bride of Christ, to be a wheat. Now listen to this right now. A wheat will produce a wheat. Is that correct right now? By their fruits, you shall know them. When you go to Matthew chapter 7 verse 15, it says something there. Matthew 7 15. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing. Inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. You see them right now. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? 17. Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruits. So if the wheat was planted by the good man, and the wheat is a good seed, so the wheat becomes a good tree that produces a good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruits. So the tar was planted by the evil one. So the tar is an evil tree. So it grows to produce an Evil fruits. That is why the Bible says, By their fruits ye shall know them. 18. A good tree cannot bring evil fruits. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruits. Every tree that bringeth not good fruit is hewed down and casted into fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. So saying I'm a Christian is not by saying, Oh, I go to church, I attend this church, I do this, I pay my tithe, I do this. That doesn't qualify you to be a Christian. No, that doesn't qualify you to be a Christian. What qualifies you to be a Christian is the fruits that you produce. The fruits in your life. The fruits in your life is your identity as a son and daughter of God. 
by their fruits ye shall know them. Daughter of God, you cannot dress naked and claim to be born again. No, you claim to be born again, but the fruits in you, it's not identifying that you are of God. A daughter of God cannot walk naked on the street. A son of God cannot be found smoking. You cannot be found in immorality. You cannot be found fornicating. You cannot be found lying. You cannot be found manipulating. Because all those are not the fruits of the good tree. So right now you ask me, Pastor, where in the Bible do we find the fruits? Come with me to Galatians 5.22. We will see something there right now. We will know which are the fruits of the Spirit. Now you see right now, before we go to Galatians 5.22, you see what Paul said in Galatians chapter 6. Galatians 6 verses 7 and 8. He said, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sow, that is what he will reap. So if you sow your denominational creed and dogmas, you mix the word of God. Yeah, you, you carry the word of God. You mix it with your own understanding, your own perceived understanding. Then at the end of the day, you will reap what you sow. If you sow the word of God, the undiluted gospel, you reap what you sow. Because a man will reap what he sow. So you cannot uh, be political with God. No. If you sow corruption, you reap corruption. If you sow goodness, you reap goodness. If you sow wickedness, you reap wickedness. Anything you sow, that is what you are going to reap. Look how the Bible says right now. For he that soweth of his flesh shall reap corruption. So the wheat are them that sow of their flesh. They don't care about spiritual things. All they care is about how to get money, how to amass this world, how to live a comfortable life here on earth. They don't care about life after death. Listen to what the devil told to Jesus. He told to Jesus Christ, he told him that, you bow to me, I will give you this world. The second he said that, I will turn these stones to food. All the devil's aim was this world, this world, this world, not thinking of eternal life. What shall it profit you if you sell your soul to the devil just to get the good things of this world and you miss eternal life? How many years are you going to spend on this in this world? Don't you know that the lifespan of man now is 70? Let me say now it's even lesser than 70. So will you mortgage 70 years or will you love to live 1,000 years with God in the millennium? That is just the beginning, huh? because after the millennium, we will live ever after in the serenity of God's presence. So if you sow the flesh, you reap corruption. But if you sow in the spirit, you shall live life everlasting. So what is the evidence that you are sowing in the spirit? Galatians 5, 22. Now you see something right now. But the fruit of the spirit, the Bible says, by their fruit you shall know them. So these are the fruits of the Spirit right now. The fruit of the Spirit is joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such things there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh and its affection. 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And if we walk in the Spirit, it means that we are producing the fruits. Of the spirit. Right now. Pastor. How do you know the fruits of the flesh? The fruit of the task. So the fruit of the spirit. Are those fruits that are produced. By the wheat. The fruit of the task. Are the fruits of the flesh. Galatians 5.19 Now. The works of the flesh. Are made manifest. Which are adultery. Yes. Adultery is the work of the flesh. That's why in the beginning, the sin was the sin of adultery. Fornication. Uncleanliness. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Emulation. Wrath. Strife. Sedition. Heresies. Envying. Murder. Drunkenness. Revealing. These are all the fruits of the flesh. So if you find yourself in any one of these, my friend, you need deliverance. So you, you have to choose one. Either you choose to go the narrow way to heaven, or you choose the broad way that leads to hellfire. Now the big question is, Pastor, how will the uh, wheat be gathered? Now I want you to look at something dangerous here in Matthew 13, 30. The Bible says that, okay, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, 
I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tars, and bind them in bundles to be burned, and burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Listen to this. When he's talking to the tars, he's using plural, many. But when he's talking to the wheat, it's singular. Gather, but gather the wheat, wheat, one, one body of Christ. For by one spirit are we baptized into one body. There is one Christ. So there is one body. So if you are a true church in America, in Nigeria, in Madagascar, in Philippines, in Indonesia, in Singapore, the Bible says that all of us are one body. For by one spirit are we baptized into one body. Who is the head of the body? Christ is the head of the body. Is that correct right now? Now listen to this right now. So right now we have one bride, one church. So what about the denominations we have today? One church, it is called the word church. What? What church? What church? The church that keeps the word of God. In the beginning was the word. In the middle will be the word. At the end will be the word. From the beginning to the end will be the word. Because thus says the Lord must prevail. So the body of Christ is that church that keeps the word of God. Irrespective of the trials, the temptation that she's going to pass through. Now listen to this right now. The only problem we have with the world is that it has always been trouble to keep the word of God. When you, when you keep the word of God, it goes against the tradition of men. It goes against government. It goes against religion. It goes against any other thing. Because the word of God is so special and so unique that it stands out on its own. So when you stand with God, it is easy to single you out for persecution. Because God stands alone. Others stand together. Now see, all false religion can communicate together. But immediately you become one in the word of God. Then you begin to face persecution from the world. So you can see right now, we don't have two Holy Spirit. No, we don't have two churches. What, I, what we preach here, if the church in Nigeria is baptized with the Holy Ghost, they will preach the same thing. Because why? We receive the unction from the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Ghost. It's not about the school of theology. It's not about the church you attend. No. Are you baptized with the Holy Ghost? Do you belong to that body? The baptism of water makes you the member of a denomination. But the baptism of the Spirit makes you a member of the celestial body of Christ. So it is the baptism of the Spirit. Until the disciples were baptized with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, they never were part of the body of Christ. You're only part of the body of Christ if you are baptized with the Holy Ghost. What is the correct baptism formula? Now, you have to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You have to pass through the process of sanctification. Then you have to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. That is the formula. The indwelling of the Holy Ghost, number one. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, number two. Very, very important. Now, watch it right now. Now, how will the... We gather. Now there's one formula. Look at this very well. John chapter 10 verse 4. You see something there right now. Hallelujah. I just hope that you're enjoying this Bible study this evening. John chapter 10 verse 4. But when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. The sheep knows the voice of the shepherd. The wheat knows the voice of the one that planted her. So God will place his voice in the reapers that will harvest the wheat. So it is a voice ministry. Listen to what he says in verse 5. And a stranger they will not follow, but will follow from him. For they know not the voice of a stranger. The bride of Christ cannot follow the voice of strange doctrines. She cannot follow the voice of denomination. She cannot follow the voice of Babylon. It is strange to her. She is waiting for the voice of God. For she knows the voice of God. And only the voice of God will she follow. She knows the voice of God. The voice of God is thus says the Lord. And that is the voice she will follow. See them right now. The children of Israel will never follow Pharaoh. 
That is why Pharaoh will continue to persecute them. But immediately Moses came. They had the voice of God in Moses. So when God calls a man and he sends that man to liberate his people, what God does is he, he takes his voice and he puts in that man. Because for that man to call out the sheep of God, they must hear the voice of God. For she will never follow the voice of politics. She will not follow the voice of religion. She will not follow the voice of sciences. Not the voice of education. Not the voice of, of pornography. The voice of adultery. The voice of sinners. The bride will not follow. She can only identify with one voice that is the voice of her maker i identify the voice of my father i know the voice of my father jesus is my father when he speaks i can identify i can pick his voice and one difference is that when they hear the voice they will follow when my savior calls i will answer when my savior calls i will go i will be somewhere listening for my name so immediately the bride hears her voice hey she will rise up from her slumber and she'll begin to follow hallelujah to follow can you hear right now john 10 25 jesus said i told you you believe not this is your second the pharisees the works that i do in my father's name they bear witness of me but you believe not because you are not of my sheep and I, as i said unto you so it's right now the task can never follow the voice of god because they are not his sheep so they cannot identify the voice of God. Even if they hear the voice of God, they will not follow. What does it mean to follow in the Bible? It means obedience. The bride of Christ, her major aim and her desire is to be obedient to her lover. Because any woman that is in love with a man will not disobey the man. So the bride of Christ is in love with our bridegroom which is jesus christ so she knows his voice and she can only be loyal to the voice of the bridegroom now verse 26 it says but you believe not because you are not of my sheep verse 27 my sheep hears my voice and i know them and they follow and i give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish so right now, eternal life is found in the voice of God. Following the voice of God, which is a coded voice. Not everybody can identify the voice. You can only identify the voice if you are predestinated by election, by the foreknowledge of God. You know the book of Romans says, for those that are predestinated, they are called. Yes, you are called. Calling means, if I call your name, I say, Joseph. It means you can hear. You hear. So, the, the word of God is the name of the bride. So, immediately God calls the name of the bride, which is the word of God, which is her theophany. When her theophany calls the bride, she knows and she hearkens and she follows. You know what? Other preachers are coming to preach theology. She said, no, this is not the gospel. They preach Trinity. No, this is not the gospel. Baptism, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. No, this is the gospel. This is not the gospel. Celebrate Christmas. I will not. Celebrate Easter. I will not. Why won't you celebrate? It is not in the Bible. I am waiting for the voice of my lover. I am waiting for the voice of the bridegroom. The bridegroom is Jesus Christ. And when he comes with the end time message, with the end time gospel with the rapture in faith she said yes this is the voice i've been waiting for hallelujah 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 now we will have to define what is a voice now you have to understand that the voice is a clear sound that is produced by a person it is a language some people call it is a phonetics so spiritually we call it the voice ministry so the bridal revival will be a word-based revival. And that word-based revival will be carried by the voice of God. It is God himself calling his children back home. So it is an audible instruction on how to go back home. Something that we can understand. Now, but let me, let me, let me, let me break it down a little. God gathering the, the wheat by the voice ministry. I get to my point right now. Now, but the voice ministry is divided into three stages. Or we call it three phases. Number one, we have the shout. The shout. Number two, we have the voice of the archangel. Number three, we have the trumpet of God. All these three are voices, but they are stages and phases of the voice. 
Now, see right now. How where do we find this in the Bible? First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. First Thessalonians 4, 16. Hallelujah. Now, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to be with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, from forty one another. So the voice ministry starts with a shout. Now what is a shout? A shout is a loud voice that awakens you from your slumber. Now remember, this voice carries the word. And the word contains the undiluted gospel. It is the word. Now remember right now, I'll, I'll give you an example right now. Now, if you, with a woman wants to marry a man, and she loves that man, do you know that she'll be waiting, she loves that man, not his position, not his car, not his houses, not his money, meaning that even if that man loses his house, his car, his wealth, his position, she will still follow him because she loves the man. So loving the man means that she is united with his spirit. She agrees with him. So nothing can move her. The only thing that she sees and she loves is that man. Why? Because she is the bride and he is the bridegroom and the two have one spirit. So they cannot do without each other. See right now, miracle cannot satisfy the bride. Science cannot satisfy the bride. Wonder cannot satisfy the bride. Now listen to this right now. If the bride will love the bridegroom, it means that the bridegroom is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word was made flesh, Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. Because in Revelations chapter 13, it made us understand, Revelation 21, sorry, it made us understand that Christ is the bridegroom. So the bride of Christ, she loves the word more than anything. She doesn't love creed. She doesn't love dogmas. No church doctrine can confuse her. She hears it, but it doesn't sink in her soul. For she is not in love with anything that is contaminated. She is only in love with, thus says the Lord. She is only in love with the undiluted gospel of Jesus Christ. You know what? So she can't be comfortable in those denominations. She cannot be comfortable in those churches. She cannot be comfortable in religion. For she is only comfortable when she hears the word. She is in love with the word. Because she is married with the word. Because the same spirit in the word is the same spirit in her. The spirit in the word is the Holy Ghost. And she also has the Holy Ghost. So the two are working together because they agree. Hallelujah. Christ and the church. In an invincible union between the bride and Christ. That is the mystery of marriage. That the husband will come, will leave his father and mother. And be joined together with his wife. And the two shall be one. The bride and the bridegroom have become one. The spirit and the church say come. You see that right now. So the word of God and the bride has become one. And the word of God is carried in the voice of God. So immediately she hears the voice of God that carries the word of God. She will hack him. She will fall in love with it. She wants to know more about Jesus. She wants to go deeper, whether in poverty. I want to know more about the word of God. No matter the trials, no matter the persecution. That is why Paul will say, what shall separate us from the love of God? Because the love of God is the word of God. Hallelujah. Shall trials shall temptations, shall persecutions. The Bible says, above all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through Christ's work, strengthen us. What will stop a woman from loving the husband? Is it trials, persecutions from family, persecutions from the world? The Bible says, above all these things, we are more than conquerors. For our love is in the world. I love the world. I love the revelation. I love the undiluted gospel. No matter how it pains me, no matter how it pricks me, that is my first love. I will never go away from my first love. I love my first love. So you see right now. So she has to be called out. Number one, by a shout. Now Matthew 25. When you go to Matthew 25, you will see, we'll read it together, Matthew 25. 
you see something there i hope you are enjoying this bible study this evening i'm so happy this evening i can say i am one of them matthew chapter 25 now the bible says something here we read from verse 1 then shall the kingdom of god be likened unto ten virgins which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom and five of them were wise and five were foolish now they that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with their lambs of course we explained this before the oil means the holy ghost aha uh -huh. now the bible said the letter killer but the spirit give it life the bible is not a storybook it takes the inspiration of the holy ghost to reveal the revelations behind the word of god and that is what the bible is looking for because the bride is in love with the theophany and the theophany is the revelation of the word of god that is the light that produced the bride from the beginning of the foundation of the world now you see right now number two is that but the wise took oil in their vessels with the lamb. So the wise virgins are those that had revelations of the word of God. But at midnight, now, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slept. But at midnight, there was a cry. Now, I told you that a shout is a loud voice. A cry is a loud voice. What did the voice say? The voice said, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out and meet him. He said, Come out, come out, come out. Come out from your sleep. Come out from your slumber. Can you see right now that denomination makes you sleep? Denomination makes you slumber. All those beliefs, they are contaminated. So anybody that takes the word of man above the word of God is slumbering, is sleeping, is dead. That is how Laodicea is dead. Babylon is dead. So the shout is a voice that comes to tell the bride, come out of Babylon, come out of religion, come out of Laodicea, come out of this church be united with the world for your bridegroom is coming soon and you know what the, the bride will hear that voice she will say yes this is the voice I have been waiting for I have been waiting for this voice there is someone calling my name I can hear my name I know the voice he is my maker I am done with denomination I am done with Babylon I am done with Laodicea I am done with hypocrisy I I am done with sin. I am on my way to the promised land right now. Hallelujah. That is the shout. The shout of the bride. The shout of the undiluted gospel. And in every age, every messenger has the shout. Paul was a shout in his day. William Branham is the shout of the Laodicean church age. He came with Thus says the Lord. He came to finish the mysteries of God right now. Hallelujah. That is the gospel. So the shout is what wakes the bride from her slumber. So are you in the world? Are you in denomination? Are you one of those that will celebrate Christmas? Are you one of those that will celebrate Easter? Are you one of those that celebrate the traditions of men and not the word of God? This night I bring you a gospel. I bring you a gospel. My friend, I love you. I come with the truth. I come with a shout. Come out of religion. Come out of Babylon. This idolatrous celebration cannot save. The pagan religion cannot save you. The Bible says you shall not worship images don't let that pope deceive you don't let that reverend father deceive you don't let that system believe this in you hacking onto the voice of god hacking onto the cry the bible says in matthew chapter 3 he said the voice of someone crying in the wilderness prepare you the way for the coming of the son of man so the shout ministry is the ministry like john the baptist he came to prepare the way for jesus the shout is coming to prepare the way the bride was sleeping she was on the farm mixed together with the task but a time come that there's got to be a total separation there's got to be a calling out there's got to be a saying bye bye to the wall goodbye wall i will stay no longer with you goodbye denomination goodbye religion i will stay no longer with you i've made up my mind to go god's way i've had the shout of my day I've had the shout of my day. I am going to follow. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm so happy this evening. I'm so glad because we are making a shout. 
if you are in denomination, if you are one of those people that goes to church and your pastor is not telling you that trouser you are wearing is a sin, those trinity you believe is a sin, I am coming today. Go back to the Bible. Go back to Jesus. Time for religion is over. Time for playing pranks is over. We don't need Pharisees. We don't need scribes. We don't need theologians. We don't need rich men. We need born again sons and daughters of God. We need people that will take a decision for Jesus. We don't need compromisers. We don't need neocolitans. We don't need lukewarm Christians. We don't need people that love the world. We need people that are ready to die for the gospel. Have you heard the voice of God for your day? Are you ready to leave? Are you ready to come out? I am ready. I am ready. No matter what you will face, come out of Babylon. Come out of Babylon. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, you see now, John will come in the first coming of Christ. There will be John. He will come with a shout, telling people the voice of someone crying in the wilderness. Prepare you the way. When you go to Matthew 3, you'll find that there. And John's aim was to come to baptize them with water. But he said there is somebody greater that is coming to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And that is Jesus Christ. Now you see right now, what was the message of John? The message of John was concluded. It can be summarized in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. It says, no, 2 Corinthians 6, 14. It says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What has, what has uh, had fellowship with light and darkness, with righteousness and unrighteousness? And what conquered at Christ with Belial? What part had he that believed with an infidel? What part had Tammuz with Jesus? What has light got to do with darkness? What has Jesus Christ got to do with all this nonsense in the world? Why is the church looking like the world? Why are the preachers not preaching Christ? Why are they compromising? The shout is telling you, what has light got to do with darkness? And what has the agreement with the temple of God got to do with idols? Some churches today have a lot of idols in their churches. What has God got to do with those idols? You are the temple of the living God. And God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them. Come out among those. Come out among unbelievers. Come out from them. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Come out of unrighteousness. Come out of unholiness. Come out of unbelief. Come out of those that are infidels. Come out of idolatrous worship. And come into Jesus right now. Separate yourself unto the Lord. Come out of them. Your salvation begins when you hearken unto the voice of the shout. When you come out. There is no salvation. Outside coming out. The first step of salvation is to take that bull step. To come out of that Babylonian system. You must come out of it. When you come out of it, then God promised that I will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and my daughters. So you have to come out. You have to come out. It's a shout. You have to come out. You see them right now. Let's go to Revelation chapter 18. Verses 1 to 5. You see again. And after these things, I saw another angel. An angel is a reaper. That is a reaper's ministry. He said, he came down from heaven, having great power, and on earth was lighting with his glory. So that angel will be lighting with the glory of God. Remember, when Moses went out of Egypt, there was a pillar of fire following him. Remember, Paul, that, that light that followed them. So all those that are called as a shout ministry, they will carry that light. And that light is Jesus Christ. In the beginning, that light shined in darkness, and darkness could not comprehend it. Two, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, you see, a shout, saying, Babylon the great is falling, is falling, and it's become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, the cage of unclean and hateful beds. For all nations have drunk the wine of the rod of a fornication, and the kings of the head have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Because this messenger will carry the mysteries of the secret. He knows Babylon. So he will use the scriptures to open the eyes of the people to see that this is Babylon. The great, she's falling. 
I had another voice from heaven saying, Come out from her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So he's saying, Come out. Why is everything saying, Come out? Come out. Come out. You know what? And that ministry in the Laudation Church age is started with the ministry of William Branham. You cannot be part of Laudatia and go to heaven. Never. The Laudation Church has failed. It is a lukewarm church. She says she is rich, for she is naked. What does it mean to be naked? She's without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because since the Holy Ghost is the seal, then that means if you don't have that seal, you'll be naked. Remember in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, they had that seal. So they did not know that they were naked. But immediately they sinned. They lost the seal of God. And now they knew that they are naked. And now in Laodicea, that is Revelation 3, 14 to 22, the Bible is saying that Laodicea is naked, but she is proud. You see, arrogant spirit. She doesn't know that she's naked, but she's naked. That means she lacks the Holy Ghost. So the Bible says you can't stay in that system. You cannot stay in religion and be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Never. Religion doesn't produce the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It produces a familiar spirit. The only place that you are short of getting the baptism of the Holy Ghost is when you come out of Laodicea into the world. Out of Laodicea onto the world. Through the voice ministry. Now you see right now. Now. The bride must come out of religion into the world. Now, this is the central word. If you don't understand anything I say this side. Now, see. In Matthew 13. Let's go back there right now. Now, gather the wheat into my barn. What will gather the wheat is the word of God. The undiluted gospel. The revelation of the word of God. And it will begin with a coming out. She has to leave the earth. So the day you hear the voice of God for your day, that day your rapture begins because rapture begins with a shout. Rapture doesn't take place at once. No, rapture is a process that starts the day you decide to leave Babylon. And that is what we call the bridal revival. The shout, the voice, and the trumpet call. The bride has got to leave the world for the world. You see, that we used to sing a song, we say, we are traveling on the right road. We are traveling on the right road. There is one way to the city of God. We are traveling on the right road. So you know what? The work of the seven church messenger, because now in the, in the first coming of Christ, John the Baptist came with a shout. Exactly right now. Now in the second coming of Christ, there's got to be a shout. And that is the seven church messenger shout. What is his work? His work is found in the book of Revelations chapter 10. Let's go to Revelations 10. Let's see how the shout will be in our day. Now, Revelations 10 says, it says, we'll go to the Revelations 10 verse 7, so that will be a bit fast. It says now, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound the mysteries of God, the mystery of God should be finished. And he had declared to his servants the prophet. What are the mysteries of God? Those are those, those revelations, those doctrines that were lost. Now you know, from the apostolic church to Nicene Council, a lot of doctrines were changed. For example, in the early church, there was no baptism in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. But at the point in time, it was infused. It was planted. So now it becomes a popular opinion of the day. And the bride was dead in that doctrine. Can you get the point right now? Now, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Trinity. You see right now, uh, baptism of by sprinkling of water. Can you see it right now? All these doctrines, they came into the church. Salvation by works. All these doctrines came into the church. They were not there before. So the work of the seventh angel, number one, is to call the bride out of those false doctrine, which is Laodicea, into the world. So he will be the one that God will give the original gospel. So he has to bring back, thus says the Lord, he has to bring back the apostolic doctrine. 
Nothing will rapture the bride. The only thing that will rapture the bride is the apostolic doctrine. So the bride is got to come out of the so-called churches we have today, back to the apostolic doctrine, back to the book of Acts, back to Pentecost, back to the gospel of Paul, back to the gospel that the apostles preach. Any other gospel is not the gospel. The only gospel that the bride knows is the gospel of the apostles. That is the original gospel. Not the Nisian gospel. Any doctrine that was picked in Nisian is the gospel of the Antichrist. Not the economical council gospel. Not the theology school gospels. No. We need to go back to the Bible. We need to go back to the book of Acts. Now, do you remember Elijah? Elijah was a shout. What did Elijah do? Elijah had to repair the broken altars. The broken altars that were broken by Baal. And Baal is the Antichrist spirit that have broken the Laudation Church H altar. That is the altar that has broken the Babylon altars. So the Babylon altars are disarranged. So God has to restore back the original what? The original seat. The invisible union of the bride and Christ through the voice ministry that begins with a shout so that the bride can go back home. See them right now. See? So the bride is going to leave. Ready to leave. Ready to leave. Are you in that number getting ready to leave? Oh, ready to leave. Hallelujah. Ready to leave. Oh, are you in that number getting ready to leave? Hallelujah. Ready to leave. Oh yeah, ready to leave. Oh, are you in that number getting ready to leave? So it's right now. That shout will call out of denomination, out of organization. It will expose all the works of darkness. Now you see, there's one peculiar thing about the shout. The shout is a public ministry. So all denominations will gang up against the voice ministry because the voice ministry will condemn all the denominational doctrines, their creed, their dogmas, any gospel that is against the word of God, the voice ministry will never keep silent. It will speak against it, for it is the shout. And it is that shout that the bride will listen to. It's just like John chapter 5, the troubling of the waters. There's got to be a troubling of the waters for the bride to be delivered from the spirit of religion. There's got to be a troubling of the waters. There's no way. The rapture begins with the troubling of the waters. And thank God for the ministry of our prophet, William Branham. He came to trouble the waters. And that is what we continue doing today. So in every age, there's got to be messengers. See number right now. So the shout ministry is to take us back to the word. Unveil the six seals. And take us back to the seventh seal, which is Jesus Christ. It has to, the, 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 the shout ministry is, to, is the mechanics. The mechanics. Bring back flesh to the bones. Because the bones is in the grave. The grave is Babylon. The grave is Laodicea. As you have the cemetery. The spiritual cemeteries are the churches you see today. That kills people. So when you see these churches. That are made up of man-made creed and dogmas. Man-made preachings. They are not churches of God. So they are places. That strangle the Holy Ghost life out of the bride. That the bride begins to faint. And she's now slumbering. So there's got to be a voice. That will call the bride out of the spiritual graves. So you know what? Most of the churches today, they are not placed for eternal lives. They are placed for dead people. The churches are dead. Because they are filled with doctrines of men. And man cannot give eternal life. Because the only one that can give eternal life is Jesus Christ. So if the churches will be alive again, then there's going to be a restoration to the apostolic doctrine, which is the undiluted word of God. The apostles left us a doctrine. They left us a doctrine. One doctrine. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. One God. My doctrine is Jesus Christ. He is the word. He is the pillar. He is the foundation. So the church is got to come out from all these man-made creed and dogmas. And she's got to go back to the world. Go back to your first love. See them right now. 
So the bride must go back to the first word. If not, she can't get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. No. You see the man right now. Until the shout ministry is finished, the voice ministry cannot come into place. So right now, next week, we're going to talk about the voice ministry. So right now, are you listening to me from any part of the world? Are you pricked in your heart today? And I need to come out. I know you have family connections with those in religion. But you know what? If you want to follow Jesus, you must forsake all. Your family, your money, your materialistic things, the comfort of this world, you must forsake it. You can never have salvation when you are still compromising with the world. It is Jesus or nothing else. It is the word or nothing else. So right now, if I receive Jesus Christ, I know that this denomination I'm going to, they are not preaching the truth. But if I receive the message of my day, this thing this pastor is saying is the truth. But if I receive it, I'm going to lose my relationships. My question to you is that what shall it profit you if you keep those ungodly relationships and go to hell? To be at peace with God has always been to be at trouble with people. To be aligned with the word of God has always been be in disarray with people so whom shall ye follow today will you choose to come out of babylon and come to jesus or will you choose to forsake jesus and go back to babylon today you are hearing the shout you are hearing the voice come out moses carried the shout he said let my people go god said to him go to pharaoh and tell him to let my people go the antichrist is the pharaoh of today Janis and Jambres were those magicians that stood and were supporting Pharaoh. And those are the World Council of Churches, the Economical Council, the Nisian Council, the Sanhedrin Council. Those are those religious people today that have held God's people bound in Babylon. But this night, God is saying, let my people go. If you are listening to this message today, come out of Babylon. Come out of religion and come into Jesus Christ. I give you a few minutes to think. You can't be a Christian and be wearing trousers, lady. You can't be a Christian and be wearing paints. You can't be a Christian and be wearing uh, uh, painted lip gloss. You can't be a Christian and be putting attachments. You can't be a Christian and be prostituting in the church. You can't be a Christian and be loyal to your church, your denomination more than Christ. It's time to go back to Christ. It's time to go back to the gospel. And I don't care how many people will hate me. You know what? I'm ready to be hated like my savior. I'm ready to go to the world despise you. I don't care if my license is ceased. I don't care what the world does to me. All I care about is that I'm in love with Jesus. He has sent me to preach the gospel. And that gospel will I preach. Come out. Families. Young people. Young people. Come out of religion. It has never helped you. Religion is the biggest scam in the world. Denomination is the biggest scam in the world. Denomination are buying people. You know what? Most of these preachers were sent to set people free. But they have held people to themselves. They own their churches. They have collected the church from Christ. So now the church is owned by men. So it is religious spirits that are going around in the world. So when you hear people say, I'm born again, check the fruits in them. Because it is the fruits in them that confirm if they are born again or not. Come out of Sodom. Come out of Laodicea. Come out of Babylon. Come out of religion. Let's bow our heads this evening. You need to think about your life. Coming home. I'm coming home. You need to pray. Never more to go. Jesus said, Come on unto me, we who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you're ready to come out today, you're ready to repent of your sins, you're ready to let go of your past life, you're ready to let go of religion, wickedness, the world is passing away. A lot of trouble in the world right now from coronavirus earthquakes wars hunger church is failing pastors failing churches are failing our only hope is in jesus christ right now that is why the true voice is coming to tell you this evening shout come out of those things they will fail you prophecies will come and go healings miracles will come and go but the word of god which is charity which is love it lasts forever Hold on to the word of God, not onto your denomination, not onto your creed, not onto your dogmas. It's time to let go of the world. Come into Christ. You're hearing the voice today. Come out, my people. Come out of Babylon. I'll begin to pray anywhere you are right now. I'll give you a few minutes to pray. 
Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord protect you. Pray for one to two minutes a sincere prayer. I'll come back and conclude our prayers. Bless you. I'll also be praying here. I'll also be praying anywhere you are. If you are in the bus, pray in the bus. If you are in the car, pray in the car. Hey Father, deliver me from the evil spirits of this generation that are trying to eat me up. The voice is here today. It's calling you out. Come out. Come out. Come out, my people. Come out of salvation. I will give you time. Salvation is between you and God. I'm going to pray for you, but you have to settle yourself with God first. Ask God for forgiveness. Come out. Come out from among them. God bless you. God keep you. I'll be back in two minutes. God bless you. evening you have prayed a sincere prayer i want to tell you that god is close to you god loves you god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son whosoever believed in him will not perish but will have everlasting life you know you, you need to open your heart this evening time for hypocrisy is over it's going home time so immediately you hear the voice of your day, the shout of your day. Your rapture begins that day. The shout, the voice, the trumpet call. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I'll go with him, with him, all the way. Father, we thank you for this evening. We bless your name because you're good. And your mercies endure it forever. Nations are falling. Denominations are falling. Babylon is falling. Laodicea is falling. She has become a habitation of all unclean spirits. Religion is falling. Church is shutting down. Quakes everywhere, hunger everywhere, and we know that it's home going time. Father, we pray, Lord, that you have mercy upon your church, have mercy upon your people. You have called us to be a holy people, you have predestinated us and elected us unto eternal life. Father, there are a lot of people listening to this message this evening. They have heard your voice. They are pricked in their heart of their sins. And they said unto Peter, What shall we do to be saved? And Peter said, Repent of your sins. And be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this gospel is unto you and to your children. Father, from every part of the world, from the US, Nigeria, South Africa, Philippines, 
Saudi Arabia, I call upon all your saints, Lord, that are willing to repent this night. I join my faith with their faith. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon them, Lord. Please them, Lord. Give them the boldness to leave those systems, to depart from the world. For you said, the cost factor is that whosoever wants to come unto me must forsake father, mother, sister, brother, and carry his cross and follow me. We cannot have the world and have the world. We must sacrifice one. If they have chosen to sacrifice the world, Lord, give them the grace, Lord. The boldness, the courage, the strength, and the grace. Carry on. We cannot do it on our own. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by the Spirit. Says the Lord. Right now, everywhere you are, I invoke the presence of God to deliver you of every demonic spirit that are holding you bound in Laodicea. And I set you free right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Fly as an eagle. Be with the Lord in the sky. Thank you for everything, Father. Take the glory, the honor, and the adoration. Both now and forevermore. Jesus Christ, we pray. And the church will say, Amen. Lord bless you. Thank you yet again for another wonderful time that we had in the presence of God today. I'm so happy and I'm so excited to meet you again to discuss with you. These are privileged revelations that God is releasing in the end time to his elect and to his children. And we just need to come out and preach this undiluted truth to the sons and daughters of God. I hope that you found this gospel in the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. See you same time again next week. Come out of fundamentalism. Come out of denominationalism. And make sure that you are connected to Jesus Christ. If you have any questions, any explanation you want us to make further, we have our contacts down there on the screen. Please uh, contact us and we'll be very willing and happy to talk to you. If you want to be baptized, you want to be prayed for, uh, everywhere around the world we have our contacts there. You can meet uh, the sons and daughters of God and you'll be baptized. And be welcome into the body of Christ. It's not a denomination. Basically, what Based. Most especially in the Philippines here, you can find us somewhere here in Olongapo City. You can visit us, have a wonderful time with us. Our church is open. We are not closed down. The church cannot be closed down. The church is forever triumphant. So once more, thank you to all the members of staff of the Pride of Christ Broadcasting Network. Thank you to all our sponsors, those sponsoring the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you to all our members. Thank you to all our viewers. And most especially, all those that have accepted the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today, to leave Babylon to come into christ i say congratulations the lord bless you the lord keep you the lord protect you please follow us up on the contacts we have you need to be disciples you need to be taught and you need to be uh nurtured in the strength and in the work of the lord once more thank you for viewing thank you for staying tuned with us the lord bless you the lord keep you have a wonderful time in philippines we say magandan gabi that is good night in nigeria we say say gobe that is i see you tomorrow and in english we say good evening and in the bible we say good evening saints of god i greet you all it is one love my people from my heart to the heart of christ straight to you god bless you and have a wonderful night rest thank you thank you god bless you